We have not sat down to film one of these in way too long. Hey guys, it's Luna. Welcome to another one of my little girl talks. This is just labeled a girl talk because I'm a girl. However, this is for absolutely anybody who wants to listen. It doesn't even matter. I just absolutely love making videos where I get to talk about my experience with things like periods, sex, body image, or anything regarding those subjects just to make you guys feel a little bit more comfortable. If I can do that, then that's all I want. If it helps some of you guys, great. It helps me the most by making these videos. So I have filmed many of these over the years, so I will include that playlist down below so you guys can watch all of them, keep up to date. But today's girl talk isn't so much focused on a certain topic. I just asked you guys to ask me questions and I will be answering them all. I have learned that there's absolutely no reason why I should be holding back any info from you guys. There is no embarrassing subjects when it comes to these videos because this is exactly what I would wanna hear when I was younger or growing up or even now. So you're welcome. I am sacrificing. I screenshotted a whole bunch of questions. We're going to dive straight in. We're not holding back. Question number one, how did you become comfortable with yourself and setting boundaries? This is a great question and it is something that I have not mastered at all. I actually have a new therapist that has been amazing for me and she is all about me setting boundaries in my life right now and it's been super hard for me. I watched this reel this morning that was basically explaining the difference between being an empath and having childhood trauma that kind of leads you to the most broken person in the room and leads you to like help everybody and that's me a hundred percent. I have always called myself an empath and I know it's such a like oh I'm so empathetic to everybody I have so many feelings but genuinely like it comes to a point where I sacrifice all of my own well-being and self-love and self-help to help others which is a good thing in a way but also not so good because I'm not taking care of myself and I will like devote my whole life into fixing somebody else and that's what I do in relationships it's what I do in friendships and that's not setting any boundaries for myself and it's so super hard for me because because I want everyone to feel so loved and important and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but I also need to realize that I'm not taking care of myself and something that my mom always tells me is on an airplane if it's going down they tell you if the oxygen masks drops always help yourself before you help others and I think that's just the perfect analogy because if I'm not helping myself and I deteriorate myself then how am I supposed to ever help others that's really what I'm trying to focus on right now and it's so much harder said than done let me tell you if someone gets mad at you for setting boundaries then that's not your friend or that's not someone that actually cares about you. People should respect you and respect your boundaries and respect that you're doing what's best for you and see that it's out of love. If I didn't want you in my life, I wouldn't set a boundary with you. Clearly, you mean something to me. What relationship do you have with your body currently? You guys know my whole struggle when it comes to body image. I've made several videos on it. It is one of like the first kind of videos that blew up for me was me crying because I hated my body and that was mostly because ballet, of course, being in that industry and trying to live up to those expectations was just killing me inside. Um, um, and then once I kind of took a step back from that, then you also in turn have the societal body image ideals and pressures that are completely different. Of course, every single day, I'd say my relationship to my body now is way healthier as a girl, as anybody really in this society. You wake up and you look and you find everything that you don't like with yourself. You know, this morning I wake up and what's on my Instagram feed, it's Vanity Fair Oscar party and it's all these celebrities that look absolutely stunning and skinny. Is that the ideal normal human? Like, no, that's not not that's not at all but that's what I convince myself to be and that's what I convince I have to look like in reality we're placed on this earth to come here and succeed and and you know feel happiness and that has nothing to do with your body or or being skinny or having like a huge ass like no it's not at all what we're supposed to be doing you guys know that you feel the most proud of yourselves when you do something that actually means something you don't feel proud of yourself when you look so skinny in a photo and I think once you can know that and learn that then that's when you find true happiness self-obsession is what causes depression and body problems and all of that and the second that you can look around yourself I didn't buy this house off of being a skinny Instagram model and editing my photos and face tuning no I didn't do that would I feel proud of myself if I did that no I think you just really need to take a step back and realize you know whatever however you think we got to this earth whether it be a god or an atom that burst and now we're here like we all came to this earth with one mission and then that was not to kill ourselves over what we look like we were here to succeed and experience this beautiful place and look at the flowers and look at the animals and look at all this and nature it's not about superficial like instagram
Instagram, Facetune, all of that. It's not. Let's dive straight into the juicy stuff, shall we? This is something I've never talked about on my channel for some reason, because I personally have had such a taboo around it, even though it's something we literally all do. How do you deal with masturbation? I think it's still a taboo. I'm right with you on there, and I'm working my hardest to make it not a taboo topic in my head. And it sucks, because for girls it is, and for guys it's so cool. You know, like, you look at Noah Centineo and his sex tape that got released of him masturbating, and it's like, oh, it just made him ten times more famous. But a girl does it, and it's so disgusting, and that's, like, really weird and gross that she does that. And that just makes me so upset, because no one really talks about it. And through all, all these girl talks, have had such a hard time talking about it for some reason, even though, oh my god, it's something I do all the time. <laughs> like, and something I have done since I was young, and everybody does. There's literally nothing wrong with it at all. In fact, it is so good for you, and amazing, and so cool that you can be in tune with your body like that, and know your body like that, and I recommend it to literally everyone. If you're even about to have sex or having sex and want to know what feels good to your body, masturbation is great. It's funny because I feel like I'm the masturbation, like, guru for all my friends. I got them all their first vibrators. And with that being said, I actually get to introduce you guys to one of my favorite vibrators and introduce you guys to one of my favorite companies, which is Lilo. Lilo was one of my first vibrators and I am very, very honored that I get to work with them. And I'm just really excited that I get to show you guys this vibrator today because it's one of my personal faves. I really like something simple and easy. The product I want to focus on specifically today is the Lilo Scylla Cruise Sonic Clitoral Massager. Chef's kiss, it is amazing. It's perfect for beginners. It is designed to be completely non-intimidating and beautiful and I really can't recommend it enough. It's great for first-time users. It's great for newbies. If you're looking to explore, I would definitely start off with her. The Scylla is all about slow sex. I feel like within the adult film industry, men are taught that like super fast, intense, hard sex is like what a girl wants. And maybe that is what you want. However, for me at least, I am all about slow, delicate, this is the perfect starter if you are the same way. I think it's so cool that women have the opportunity to know their bodies and know what their bodies like and the fact that these things are invented that just make us feel so connected to our body and beautiful and healthy. I just think it's amazing and this is the perfect beginner. I think that the Scylla embodies everything that we learned during lockdown, that we need to return to the basics when it comes to our bodies. It includes Lilo's patented Sensonic technology as an ultra soft body safe silicone. There's eight pleasure settings. So I encourage all of you guys to dare to try slow sex with the Lilo Scylla. So thank you so much Lilo for sponsoring this video. I am so excited to lift this taboo and open up the conversation when it comes to masturbation. And I think Lilo is the perfect brand to do that. So if you guys are interested, please check out the link in my description. You guys will get 15% off. Mommy Montana is here to gift you guys the gift of an orgasm. You're welcome. Okay, moving on with the video. Is it normal to like being single or not want to be in a relationship or am I just weird? You are not weird. I am the one to tell you right now and all my friends know that I have always been so anti-relationship. I think for me, I've just been hurt so many times and I've been in relationships in which I have not been elevated in me. I've only been brought down and I think that's common, especially in young relationships because I'm learning so much about myself. I have so much trauma to work through that I know that I become psychotic in relationships. It takes a really specific person and a really healthy relationship for me to be a better version of myself than I already am. Like I am so happy in my life. I'm such an independent person. So especially if it's a partner or something, then it has to be exactly the right fit for me to have a happier life than I already do. You know? That a lot of people settle for things because they want that partnership and comfortability and knowing that you have that person. You're not weird at all for not wanting a relationship. In fact, you're probably saving yourself from a lot of hurt, especially when you're young. Just because I was so hurt, I was so scared of being vulnerable. I think that's also just a really big part of finding love and finding that right person is by being vulnerable. And at the end of the day, I don't think anyone should be out there searching for somebody, you know? You have to let it all come to you naturally. And when you're living your happiest life, when you're confident, when you're doing everything that you ever dreamed, then the right person's gonna fall into place into that, you know? I promise you the right person comes in at the right time and only elevates your life and it's amazing. Kind of piggybacking off of that, elements of a healthy relationship. For me, I always thought that my biggest trauma when it comes to dating men came from a situation I went through last year that I kind of talked about with you guys, just being in a super toxic situation where I was treated terribly. And from that, I was always like, relationships suck and blah, 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 blah. But in reality, that was not even close to being a relationship. I randomly think that most of my like trauma or relationship like issues come from my first relationship I was in that seemed healthy from the outside, but I just didn't know any better 
better and you know I was like not allowed to go out and with my friends because I'd have to text him constantly or like every time I'd be like oh I actually decided I want to sleep at home tonight it's like oh well you don't even love me and blah 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 or it was just like made me feel so ashamed for wanting to live my own life and be independent and it was so all-consuming now being in a healthy relationship I have learned that that is not at all how it's supposed to be I feel like when you're in a healthy relationship you feel so excited and empowered to do your own thing and that love only just kind of makes you happier and brings you up to do your own things and that person should be so supportive in what you want healthy relationship you don't feel that anxiety in your chest and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about and once you find that then you'll know but again I'm just gonna keep saying it and saying it if you're already here then that person comes and meets you there and that goes up like you guys just succeed together and you're happy together but if it's uneven in any way or you both go down then that's not a healthy relationship guys when you find it it is magic is it normal to not finish during sex okay ladies so basically the percentage of women that actually come from penetrative sex is 20% meaning 80% of us do not it is very very normal not to finish during sex especially with these young men that just have no idea how a woman's body works and don't even put the priority on making that work it's normal even if the guy is really trying to pleasure you it's normal not to because for girls you have to be so comfortable and relaxed and like comfortable in the person at least for me I don't know if that's like a general thing maybe it's not but or you're in a relationship and you're not then I think that's definitely a conversation to have and I've had that conversation multiple times and that should only inspire or motivate the guy to want to pleasure you if it at all makes him upset or embarrassed that is not the right reaction it's definitely just an open conversation to have you have every right to finish as much as the guys do which is literally almost every time how to stop being jealous over your partner's past relationships and flings Oh lord, I am not the right person to ask for this because I have learned I'm a very jealous person. For me right now, it's hard, especially being and living in LA and being in this industry. Most of the men that you meet have been with like the most stunning models, actresses, famous people that it makes it so much harder, but you have to understand that that person chose you. You have to be confident in knowing that you are the right person for that relationship, you know? They literally chose you and you're the one that gets to have him fully and you're the one that gets to have his heart and everybody has a past, even you do, I'm sure, and and the only thing that you can do is just be present. You guys are in this love together. It's not about your past or your futures or anything. And I think when it comes to trust, especially, it's something that I struggle with a lot. I always come back to this conclusion that I know that I'm the perfect person for this person. I know that I treat them with the most respect. I know that I love them completely. I know that we are in love together. That if he were to go off and cheat on me, then the shame is completely on him. It has nothing to do with me. If that person does have the desire to cheat, they're going to to do it regardless there's nothing I can do more of or or look better or do anything that would make them not cheat if that's their intention to that at the end of the day it's completely out of my control so if I'm in love with the person that would go off and cheat on me then it has nothing to do with me it is completely embarrassing and it's a shame on them but you can't go back and then look at yourself and think oh what what did I do wrong because it has nothing to do with you so all you can really do is be present and for me I, I trust in the fact that my partner would not cheat on me and if they did then that is really embarrassing for them I clearly saw something in someone that wasn't there and the only mistake that I made would be you know not seeing the fact that this person was not mature enough and did not respect me enough but it has absolutely nothing to do with me that's my knowledge on trust and jealousy and all of that do I really actually believe in it no because I constantly am insecure in the fact that my partner would cheat on me or that I'm not hot enough or I'm not doing this enough or maybe I'm not good at sex enough or anything Thing, you know but at the end of the day this person chose me and we're in this love together and you can only hope that and that's that I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here because I talked your ear off and I know I did but I feel really good about this video and everything we talked about it's advice that not only you guys must take but even I need to take I know I say all this stuff but it's so much easier said than done it's so hard for us girls and us everybody really in this society feel comfortable in being a woman and I know that I know that if we all band together and love each other and bring women up that we can really get so far and just open the conversations up because there's so much taboo and if we talk about it it will really just save so many people from so much hurt and I'm hoping that I did that today for at least one of you out there but I love you guys so much please go check out Lilo I'm so honored that they sponsored today's video because they're a brand that I 
genuinely love. I love their message. I love their products. I love everything about them. The link is in the description if you guys want to try the Sila. I love you guys to every moon and back, and I will see you next week. Bye!